Welcome to this segment where we will look at uh, peak current mode control in regulated DC power supplies. And we will also see what happens in discontinuous conduction mode uh, in these power supplies. So let's, uh, let's begin. Uh, there are two types of uh, current mode controls. Uh, one is uh, peak current mode control that we will look at uh, in this uh, segment. And uh, average current mode control uh, we will not uh, discuss here, but uh, it, it is used in the design of uh, power factor control circuits. So what we see here is a, a buck boost converter uh, that is being uh, controlled. And uh, objective remains the same. That is, we want to control this output voltage to some reference value over here. So these two are compared in the controller and uh, the output of this controller is then uh, uh, adjusted by a slope compensation. And you'll see the reason for that. That gives us this uh, reference current IL asterisk or IL star. So what is going on here is that uh, the overall objective is the same. That is to uh, regulate the output voltage, but we are using an inner uh, variable or state variable, if you will, which is the inductor current. So that's the reference current for the inductor current, and it is compared with the actual current that is measured here in this comparator. And uh, this goes to a flip-flop, and uh, it uh, actually uh, turns the switch off. It resets it, so this uh, value here becomes zero, and this, this switch turns off. But then a clock comes, clock pulse, uh, at uh, regular intervals, which determines the switching frequency, it sets this uh, flip-flop, and uh, this becomes one, and this switch turns on. So, so that's what goes on in this circuit, and uh, uh, we will uh, discuss it a little more. <clears throat> so uh, now why this uh, slope compensation? Uh, the controller output uh, we saw is here, this uh, output of the controller, which is adjusted by this uh, 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 an additional signal here, which we'll call slope compensation. And without going into the details, let's uh, just say that it is to avoid uh, oscillations at subharmonic -fre frequencies, subharmonic frequencies of the switching frequency. So that's why this uh, slope compensation is used. And as you can see here, whenever the clock pulse comes, uh, the switch is turned on, and uh, the inductor current begins to ramp up, and when it hits this uh, level over here uh, in the comparator, the switch is turned off at this instant, and, uh, and you can see that inductor current begins to fall. Next clock pulse comes, that uh, flip-flop is reset again, and uh, the switch is turned on, and the cycle repeats. So uh, how would we design the controller in this circuit? Uh, well, uh, we can assume that the peak current mode controller, uh, that is much, much faster, extremely faster than this outer voltage loop that we will design because you know, that's happening every uh, switching cycle. So what we can say is that uh, the, the, the peak mode controller can be replaced by unity. That means uh, whatever we want is what we get over here. So these are this control block diagram is in terms of the disturbances, uh, or perturbations, I should say, not disturbances, perturbations, uh, tilde. And as you can see here, the, the perturbation in the input voltage, of course, is zero because that's what we are trying to regulate. So there should be no perturbation there. And this controller is what we are trying to design here. And uh, so we have the controller. And uh, the output of this controller is the, the perturbation in this inductor current reference. And uh, we assume the peak current mode controller to be represented by a, a unity uh, transfer function. And then the output, which is this uh, uh, inductor current perturbation, goes into the power stage, uh, which is uh, shown here on the top. And we get uh, the perturbation in the output voltage. So that's the nature of this uh, uh, control diagram here, but the next thing we have to look at is what is the transfer function for this power stage here. 
Uh, so, so, so let's see here. Uh, did I miss a slide here? Uh, uh, so here is an example, and uh, we will see what the uh, uh, how we can design this uh, uh, controller for this uh, peak current mode control here. So this is being done in PSPICE, uh, as you see here. But we can also do it uh, analytically to get the transfer function for the power stage. So in the power stage, as you saw earlier, we need the transfer function between the output voltage and the inductor current perturbations. And uh, just like we had uh, earlier in one of the segments seen the transfer function between the perturbation, uh, the output voltage perturbation and the duty ratio perturbations, in the same manner we can analytically determine what the, the transfer function be will be between the output voltage and the inductor current perturbations here, okay, which will be in this form. And if you plot this as a function of frequency in terms of gain and the phase angle, you'll see this. And you see here that it's uh, very somewhat benign compared to uh, the transfer function for this that you will get in a uh, buck boost converter. That is here, the, <coughs> the phase angle is uh, going towards minus 90 as compared to it was going towards minus 180 in the other one, which makes... Uh, designing the controller more challenging, okay? So this can be done analytically, but certainly we can do it uh, using PSPICE. And uh, so what we have done here is uh, we have this uh, representation. Of course, this is in CCM. Uh, and uh, so we represent this uh, power pole by its average model. Uh, this is the steady state uh, uh, duty ratio, which is represented by a DC voltage source. And then we put in a uh, perturbation in this duty ratio, uh, which is represented by an AC source here. We'll vary the frequency of this AC source. We can keep the amplitude at one. And uh, this time, when we plot uh, this uh, transfer function as a function of frequency, uh, you know, we are looking at the output voltage here uh, and this inductor current perturbation over here, this current over here. So if you take these two quantities, this one and uh, this one over here and plot them, then uh, you will get this transfer function, which is very similar to what we achieve using uh, that expression that we saw in the previous slide here. So, so the bottom line is that uh, if you want to, uh, this time we can uh, close the the feedback loop at a cross fre crossover frequency of, let's say, in this example, five kilohertz, and we can find out what uh, the gain of the power stage is at uh, five kilohertz. And similarly, we can find out the, the phase angle of this power stage, the transfer function at uh, five kilohertz right here. So if you, uh, from the previous uh, Borde plot, uh, we know these values here. And uh, again, the, the phase margin which we, which we will require is, let's say, 60 degrees. So based on that and knowing the phase angle of this power stage, uh, we, and uh, knowing that the controller transfer function that we will use in here, this is what we are trying to design, uh, we'll again put a pole at the origin because we are trying to um, make the steady state go to zero. But this time for phase boost, we do not need two zeros and two poles because uh, the power stage transfer function is uh, much more benign, okay? So we can just get by with one zero and one pole as shown here. And uh, <coughs> uh, knowing what the, the power stage uh, phase angle is at the crossover frequency and the phase margin that we want, we can calculate phi boost and analytically, we can say that uh, uh, then we know the ratio of the, the square root of uh, pole and zero uh, frequency, and uh, also the, the geometric mean of uh, zero and pole frequency give us the crossover frequency. So from this equation, uh, well, um, we have two equations and two unknowns, which is the frequency of the zero and frequency of the pole, so we can calculate both of these here, 
that means in this transfer function this is calculated and this is calculated and then to calculate this gain of this transfer function we know that the product of the gain of the controller transfer function and the the gain of the power stage transfer function uh, they should be equal to 1 because that is the definition of crossover frequency right where the open loop transfer function from here to here uh, that gain is going to unity. <coughs> so we have uh, from this equation knowing that uh, uh, we have this from the Bode plot uh, over here uh, we can then calculate what k sub c ought to be okay. So we can calculate all three quantities related to this uh, the controller transfer function and once we have that then let us say we pick some reasonable value of R1 here we can calculate what other uh, you know resistors and capacitors in this uh, circuit ought to be okay. So those are given in terms of uh, K sub C, uh, omega sub Z and omega sub P which uh, we can calculate from uh, earlier discussion. So in PSPICE, uh, this uh, peak current mode controller is implemented as shown here <coughs> and uh, you can see that at 3 milliseconds there is a, a load disturbance and in response to that uh, uh, this uh, how this voltage V0 uh, behaves and that is shown uh, in the simulation over here. Now uh, we can also uh, develop a uh, a controller if the power supply is to operate in discontinuous conduction mode okay and uh, uh, you know in discontinuous conduction mode um, in fact in a generic way uh, we can represent a switching power pole uh, by an ideal transformer augmented by dependent voltage source and a dependent current source. So those dependent voltage and current sources exist only in the discontinuous conduction mode and they, they disappear in the continuous conduction mode. So we can put that uh, generic circuit over here in piece by modeled by uh, uh, voltage and current sources, dependent uh, voltage and current sources and once again uh, this uh, DC voltage is setting the steady state uh, 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 duty cycle and uh, <coughs> which establishes the steady state condition in this uh, circuit and then we put an AC source uh, frequency of which is swept. We can keep the amplitude at 1 and uh, we can see what happens to this transfer function which we would like to see uh, this over I sub L right here. So that is plotted uh, in the <coughs> in this slide. And here you can see that if this was to be operated in under a load condition which uh, results in continuous conduction mode, we get uh, these uh, green plots uh, for the transfer function and we can see that uh, the phase angle is going towards uh, minus 180. Whereas if you are in DCM where the inductor current does not flow uh, all the time, then the phase angle is uh, more like uh, towards minus 90 degrees okay. So this is a much easier uh, transfer function design. <coughs> so uh, uh, the controller design. So this brings us to uh, the end of this segment where we have looked at uh, peak current mode control and uh, how we can get the power stage transfer function in uh, the discontinuous conduction mode of operation and then we can design our controller based on that.